Okay, so this video is the second part of the energetic section for the AQAS um, chemistry specification um, and it's going to be centered around calorimetry. It's a reasonably straightforward section provided you can remember um, an equation and various units that associate with it. Uh, and if you can do that, then actually it's honestly not too bad at all. <coughs> so, what is calorimetry? Well, calorimetry is a way really to use um, equipment to measure often used to measure how much energy uh, fuels release or how much energy fuels contain I guess um, looking at burning them and that's really the context where um, you'll certainly come across it in the AS specification so it's looking at burning fuels and calculating energy changes as a result of that um, now what you would use in and you may or may not have seen one of these um, but something like this so this thing is called a bomb calorimeter um, and the way it works is, imagine we've got our fuel. Now, it could be a sample of food, it could be an alcohol, it could be anything at all. But we've got our sample, and whatever it is that we're trying to calculate how much energy it contains, we whack it in here, in this thing here, in the crucible. So, some sort of metal crucible here, tungsten or whatever. Um, we have a lot of labels here and various parts. Um, and what we find is that, so our food or whatever it be is in here, we have these ignition wires and essentially this coil that's going to get hot and is going to ultimately ignite the sample or whatever it is we've got. To make sure that our combustion within here is complete, we have an oxygen supply, lots of oxygen being pumped in here, so that we make sure this is completely reacted. Um, this whole thing, this whole thing is found within this steel bomb, so this steel casing um, around which there is this heater and around which is this essentially a, a, a big water bath. So the whole thing's immersed in water. Now what it means is that when this combusts and the energy is released um, exothermically, that energy is going to be released and it is going to be absorbed by the water. And so the water is going to take that energy in and as a result the water's temperature is going to increase. So it's going to go from a lower number to a higher number. And of course here we've got our thermometer to measure that change uh, and then we can apply that to various calculation later on and we can work out the energy change here to make sure we have an even spread of energy if you like and so it's not just sort of hot just around here it's the an equal spread across the entire thing uh, we have a stirrer which keeps the water mixed up so um, helps again with calculations later on uh, and the whole thing is in this sort of big insulated jacket so we'll have uh, an airspace here similar to like a thermos flask really so helping to reduce heat loss really and then this insulating jacket again helping to reduce heat loss um, so all the energy in theory remains in here that's within the water that's the that's the hope anyway so the water gets warm we measure the temperature change now in reality in a, in a class kind of environment you're not going to see something like this unless your school happens to have quite a lot of money uh, and you have actually got one what you would normally use for this sort of practical type, whether it was food or quite often alcohol burners, is you would look at something like this. You'd have um, a funny metal pot thing here resting on a gauze or a pipe clay triangle, um, tripod at the bottom, and then some sort of fuel here that's that's going to be burnt. So whatever this be, some sort of burner we could say, and we could have an alcohol in there for example. This thing here is a copper calorimeter, and basically this carries out a similar kind of role. Um, we can measure the temperature of the water before our burning and then after and we can calculate a temperature change just like we could do here with our thermometer. Um, using the equipment here we're basically transferring the energy from the combustion of our fuel into the water. So it's the same principle but it's not quite as accurate. I say not quite, it's really bad. It's terrible. Uh, the reason being that there's a lot of opportunity for heat loss. You are not going to allow for all of this energy within the fuel that is not all going to go here some of it's going to heat the environment 
to the air around here. Some of it's going to heat this tripod, some of it's going to heat the gauze, or if it's a little bit better to reduce that, you could use a pipe clay triangle, but that's going to get heated as well. So it's it's by no means perfect, and yeah, it's not brilliant, but you can use it, and you can get calculations from it, and you can certainly use it to practice um, practice this whole sort of method. So this is what you've probably done, and I believe this is one of the PSAs actually as well, is um, uh, combustions of alcohols, and I forget exactly what it's called now. Um, so yeah, that's what you've probably seen. Now for the remainder of this, I'm going to look at the equation and then I'm going to apply it to an exam question because um, that to me seems like the the most obvious way to look at this. And having looked through the past papers, the exam questions all follow a pretty regular pattern um, and, and the questions all invariably look very, very similar. So the next part then is to look at a magic equation and that equation is Q equals M C delta T. Um, so Q equals M C delta T. Now at this point you might be thinking, well, I haven't, I do know what this is, or I have no idea what this is, um, and either of those is fine. Now this you need to know. You're not given a data sheet in chemistry. It's not physics. There's no data sheets. So you must learn this. Um, but you'll be given various bits of data in it. For example, the the one that maybe is the most confusing out of them all is this is this C here. Now C is the specific heat capacity. Um, now this is this will be given to you in an exam. There's no way you ever have to learn this. And the value you'll be given in an exam will be as follows. It will be the 4.18 and it'll be joules per Kelvin per gram. I will look at the things like Kelvin in a second. But note that it's in joules. Well, this thing here, our far left, is our heat change. And this is measured in joules. Joules, joules. We can see now we've got this same thing here. We've got the same units. We can't have this measured in kilojoules and this measured in joules. It just would not work. It'd be a disaster. So that's not going to work. M, you might guess this one, it's going to be mass. Now, this is a weird one, and invariably... What we're dealing with is, it's this mass here. It's the mass of the thing being heated, so normally the mass of water. It's strange to use a mass rather than a volume, but it's the way the equation works, and it's it's how you use Q equals MC delta T. But it's actually quite straightforward. The mass is measured in grams, again, down here. Um, and the way you can work this out is that for every one centimetre cubed of water that you have, that is equal to 1 gram. So therefore 100 centimeters cubed equals 100 grams and you know etc etc. I'm sure you can work out what's happening there. Whatever it is here knock the centimeter cubed off and stick grams on. Final delta T. Um, the, this is temperature change and this is what that term delta here really means. It's this change of temperature. Now this is measured in Kelvin. And Kelvin is one of these magic units that is not used really in, in sort of in everyday life. But it's quite a big sort of unit used in chemistry. I'll just move this across slightly. Um, and Kelvin is one of those that you don't need to convert it for this question. Now Kelvin actually, to work out, to go from degrees Celsius to Kelvin... You add 273, so that's why we that's where we get this 298 Kelvin standard um, temperature is actually just 25 degrees Celsius, which is I think this is a little bit easy to understand, but this is this is how it's used in the in the world of chemistry. But imagine you had a temperature rise from 20 to 30 degrees Celsius. Well, let's convert that to um, to Kelvin. So we'd have 293 to 303. Well, it doesn't matter which actual unit you use because the difference, the temperature change, is always going to be 10. So if you are horribly confused and you can't work it out how to convert it and you think that's just a step, you're going to mess it up, use the degree Celsius um, and the temperature change remains the same regardless of it being degrees Celsius or Kelvin. Just be aware if they are asking you to calculate a temperature that needs to be in Kelvin. But for normal things where we're looking at heat change and ultimately an enthalpy change, um, we can just use 
the values here. So, Q equals MC delta T. Heat change is equal to the mass multiplied by the specific heat capacity multiplied by the temperature change within the situation. And a situation could be something like this one. <coughs> so, 8D, so coming up the end of the Unit 2 paper, a student carried out a simple laboratory experiment to measure the enthalpy change for process 3. It doesn't matter what process 3 is, it's just a process. The student showed that the temperature of 200 grams of water increased by 8 degrees Celsius when 0.46 grams of pure ethanol was burning air and the heat produced was used to warm the water. Use these results to calculate the value in kilojoules per mole obtained by the student for this enthalpy change. The specific heat capacity of water is 4.18 joules per Kelvin per gram. Give one reason other than heat loss while the value obtained from the student's result is less at than a data book value, blah, 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 blah. So, lots of words. It looks very big. It's actually very small. Let's work out what we need to know here. So, 200 grams of water, that's going to be fairly important. 8 degrees Celsius, it's going to be fairly important. This is going to be fairly important, but later, and that's going to be fairly important, but again later, and this is going to be fairly important. So we have a few things here. Let's actually see, well, what are these things? So this thing here, straight away, this is my delta T. It's my temperature change. They're telling me the water increased by 8 degrees Celsius. I don't even have to work it out. They're giving me the temperature change. Perfect. This, my mass, so my M, brilliant they're not even giving it me in centimeters cubed I've just got it as a mass it's even easier and here we go as promised there's C the specific heat capacity of water so my first step Q equals MC delta T well it's fairly easy this would just go well there's M 200 well there's C 4.18 and I'm given delta T as 8 so I whack that in and then I add it up and I get an answer of 668 8 joules remember it's joules not kilojoules it is joules 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 do not get that wrong because that will be the end of your question kind of so 6688 joules provided I've worked that out correctly now that isn't the answer because the actual answer, the actual question is asking me to calculate, is using these results to calculate the value in kilojoules per mole obtained with the student for this enthalpy change. Well, at no point have I called this an enthalpy change, because you should know that enthalpy change is delta H. Well, Q is not delta H. So there's a problem there. But we can convert this into delta H, and it's actually not too bad. And the way that we can do that is as follows. Now, the first step is... Look at the units. If you've forgotten what the units of enthalpy change are, look at them. Kilojoules per mole. Now I'm going to ignore the mole for now and I'm just going to say kilojoules. Well, this is in joules, so I've got to convert it to kilojoules. So 6,688 joules is equal to, divided by 1,000, 6.688 kilojoules. Now I'm going to keep that as 6.688 rather than rounding because I don't want to introduce any rounding errors early on, which is going to affect my result at the end. These are numbers that I can deal with. I can I keep that. My final answer, I'll keep to three significant figures. But right now, I don't need to round. And I would advise that you do not round. And actually, what I would suggest you'd always, or get your head round, is using the answer button on your calculator to recall an answer, um, to then use in a following, in a later calculation. Or also how to store numbers within the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, and I think there's some X, Y, or whatever as well. Have a look at that, and, it, and that's a really useful thing to do. Because if you can store stuff, you can use the entire values, and you completely eradicate any, any rounding error then. So I've got to kilojoules. Whereas actually, the problem is, I know this is kilojoule per 0.46 grams of ethanol. Because that's what I burned. I had 0.46 grams of ethanol. Now, as far as I'm aware, that's not a mole of ethanol. So let's have a look at ethanol, and let's let's see if we can convert this to moles and see actually how many moles is this. So moles equals mass over MR. Well, I've got my mass. It's 0.46. My MR is going to be. I'll write it out for you. So we've got CH3. So that's 12 add 3, CH2, 12 add 2, OH, 16 add 1. And that comes to a great, a grand total of, I believe, 46, 12, 24, 26, 
29, 30, 46. So we've got 0 0.46 divided by 46. And that gives us a lovely number of 0 0.01. So actually now I can change this and I can say, I'll just scroll down here, I'll, I will go back up at the end. I can now say that I have 6.688 kilojoules per 0 0.01 moles. But I need it in kilojoules per mole, per one mole. This is not one mole. Now the easiest way to convert any number of moles into one is to divide them by themselves. So 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.01 equals one. Brilliant. So if I do 6.688 divided by 0 0.01, that will give me my enthalpy change in kilojoules per mole. So let's work that out. The answer actually is therefore going to be 6.688 divided by 0 0.01, 668.8 kilojoules per mole. And I'm sorry I keep switching between kilogram, kilojoules, sorry, slash mole or kilojoule mole minus one. They're both the same. I just quite like using either. So that's our value for the enthalpy change. Now we have the opportunity or the option to keep this as it is or we could do a bit of rounding if we want. So we could maybe say this is 6.692 uh, kilojoules per mole to 3 SF and that would be absolutely fine as well. Um, I would probably be tempted to keep it as that because it's not got a, a billion uh, decimal points. We've just got a quite even number there. But if you do want to stick to three significant figures, go ahead. Okay, so just once more then. Q equals MC delta T worked out our value for Q, converted our Q into kilojoules, worked out from the mass of the fuel burnt how many moles that was, converted that into one mole and did the same to our uh, heat change in kilojoules to finally arrive at this number. But if we've got two carried away we will have missed this little guy here. One more mark available here. Give one reason other than the heat loss why the value obtained from the student's result is less exothermic than a data book value. So a data book value is looking for, it's going to be pretty accurate. And if someone's going to do that experimentally, they're going to use something like our lovely trusted bomb cal calorimeter with all this great stuff here. Now heat loss is one of the major causes. Heat loss here, look, it's being lost. Look how much heat is being lost everywhere. Heat everywhere. And then some goes into here, but then there's another load goes over here and into the floor and into the one gram. So we're losing a lot of heat, but it's saying that we cannot use other than heat loss. Now I would guess that a lot of people put down here, uh, heat loss, that's not right because they've told you not to use that. So the classic one is that actually here we have this lovely oxygen stream being pumped right into here. We don't have that here. We're just relying on the oxygen around here and it's actually quite easy for incomplete combustion to take place. So actually the answer we've got here incomplete combustion and learn those two if it's not going to be heat loss it's going to be incomplete combustion if they're not suggesting it if they're not saying it can't be heat loss stick with heat loss right so i just want to look at one more example um, of uh, the type of question you get in an exam and it's one that often is asked in uh, ices and empers as well and there certainly was an ice for a few years ago or a couple of years ago um, on enthalpy changes and that's a question that looks something like this so this question is different to the last one because it doesn't involve the usual sort of um, we've got a fuel and we're heating it or we're boiling a fuel and we're heating some water it's turned on its head slightly but it's still involving uh, the old Q equals MC delta T and the way we can tell that is because if we look in the question We've got this here, 4.18 joule per Kelvin per gram, and the specific heat capacity there. So it's giving us that information. As soon as we see that, we know we're going to have to use this. Um, but the actual calculation part of it's really quite straightforward. Um, again, we're trying to eventually work out our enthalpy change. So what do we need this time? Well, we're going to use this at some point. We're going to need this. We're going to need this. We're going to, of course, need this. Uh, and I think that's probably about it in fact yeah yeah but actually they give you a um, volume and also a mass which is quite nice so Q let's work out Q M 
mass given, boom, 25. Times by C, of course, we're given it as always. Never learn it, you'll be given it. Eventually, if you do enough practice, we'll just pick it up, but don't make an, any effort to do that. Again, we're given our, our temperature rise. We're not told, not need to work it out. You might have to, we don't have to. Just stick it into 14. There we go. Whack our numbers together, 25 multiplied by 4.18 multiplied by 14, and the answer to that is 14. 63 joules. Remember, we're using joules here, we're not using kilojoules, but we need to now calculate the enthalpy change from this. Now, a couple of points actually that I should have mentioned actually as I did this calculation. With this type of question, although you might say, well, this is being added as well, why are we not including this as a mass? Don't worry about that. Ignore that. We're just looking at them, particularly gives it in the question. You should assume that all of the heat released used to raise the temperature of the 25 grams of water. So we're excluding what was added. We are just looking at this 25 grams. And that's obviously the value we put in here. So the delta H calculation, much easier than the last one because they give us the moles already. So we know that 1463 joules is released per 0 0.0210 moles. Now of course this is in joules, we did in kilojoules. So for a start let's divide this by a thousand, 1.463 kilojoules per again 0 0.0210 but we can skip that now, we'll just divide this by 0 0.0210 and that's going to be our answer in, I'll just rub this out quickly make it look a little bit neater, that's going to be our answer in kilojoules per mole and that equals this, 69.7 now, as I didn't do in the last one, I hope you saw the, the big message that I put on the screen, and I'd already recorded that part, and I couldn't go back and change it, but I'm not going to get it wrong this time. We need to, because this is a delta H, we need to dictate whether it's going to be exo or endothermic. And for this one, temperature is increasing. It's an exothermic reaction, giveaway there. We need to include a minus sign. If you don't include that, you're actually going to lose a mark. Um, and I guess we should really put our proper units in here as well. There you go. So our answer there, three significant figures. Bish bash boss, 60, minus 69.7 kilojoules per mole. That's going to get you the full marks on this question. And this is the only other real kind of question you could get um, relating to Q because MC delta T. So, there you have it. I've looked at the terms of calorimetry, briefly what it means. Looked at this new equation that you need to learn, Q equals MC delta T. And then also applied it to a, a fuel burning question and then to... Um, another question which is more chemical in its nature I guess uh, both of which follow very similar lines and hopefully make some sense uh, if you have any problems any questions please do um, stick them in the comments um, and I hope that's been of some help